Hi there, everybody. Phyllis Moore here, Philosophically Speaking. I appreciate you tuning in today, and I do invite you to click like, share, and subscribe. I'm kind of chuckling because as I started um, and kind of thought, well, how do I lead into this? And all I could think about was this old song that um, they call me Mellow Yellow. <laughs> and it's like, I, I don't know. Yellow's not my color. It's not my thing. I love yellow on people that it looks good on. But ever since I had my colors done back in the, whatever it was, 80s or 90s when that was a big, big fad, I realized that, um, you know, yellow, peach, orange, those kind of colors, not so good on Phyllis. They make me look tired. Well, I am tired. I'm already tired. Do I need to draw more attention to it? No, I do not. Do I want other people to go, man, you really look tired? No, that's not a compliment. That is not something that may, that you can pull out and say, oh, okay, that's encouraging in any way, shape, or form. It's kind of like a bad hair day hat. If people cannot figure out I'm having a bad hair day, then why would I wear a hat that says bad hair day hat? And I know what that means. It means, eh, my hair, you know, went wonky. I don't feel like doing anything to it. I'll just put a hat on, but don't draw undue attention. But, uh, and I may have shared some of this before, but in the recent passing of my father, uh, my daughter wrote me at one point and she said, I'm seeing a lot of yellow butterflies. Now, okay, I'm not going to get all new agey and all, you know, ethereal and woo whatever, symbolism, what have you. But I'm telling you, when you are going through a grief or a loss and things happen, you get a little introspective and look for the meaning or just to have hope and to just have reassurance and comfort. That's a big thing. So when she said that, I said, well, that's kind of interesting because I have been as well. It may very well be that we just live in an area where yellow butterflies have popped up. It may be the season, it may be that this, this summer, you know, quarantine, yellow butterflies have escaped and gone wild. Yeah, butterflies gone wild, new show on Netflix, whatever. But she was so curious about it that she looked it up on Google. And when she did, she discovered that something about the yellow butterfly symbolizes hope and guidance. and. In early Christianity, the yellow butterfly was a symbol of the soul. So, you know, and if the, if the butterfly, you know, flies around you, you know, it's, it's like encouragement. It like, it, well, it represents the soul is at peace. So that being said, you can draw your own conclusions. If you don't want or need that kind of information, move on with your life. It's fine. But I am here to tell you that I found great, um, comfort in that because I thought, well, that's very sweet. And whether or not that's true, set in stone, an Aesop's fable, whatever, it brought a smile to my face. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But what I was going to, I guess, also share, because you may have heard me reference the yellow butterfly before, but I walk in this area and it's mostly, you know, a, a neighborhood. But there's this one side road where there's this very big house. And I know they have a lot of frou-frou parties, garden parties, and lawn parties, and stuff like that. And there's a whole um, hill that goes down where people can park alongside it. And there's like a barn and, and different things. It's beautiful. It is a beautiful piece of property. And across from it, there's, you know, if you really look, you know, you might not see it from the roadway, but there's some kind of lake and, and then there's, you know, I mean, you go farther and farther and it's like farmland and trees and various things. And I happen to have kind of gone just kind of, you know, when you, when you walk, sometimes you just cut, you know, through something. Um, you don't really go down, you know, that complete road, but you just make bigger, um, wider turns just to kind of get in some extra steps. And there's a dog that always comes out and barks at me every day. Doesn't matter what I say or do, but it's luckily on one of those invisible fence, those collars that won't let them venture out of the yard. That being said, I still don't taunt dogs. I never will because who's to say they might break through, break free or the battery runs out and then they'll remember that <laughs> I'm the one that didn't behave very nicely and they'll come after me and uh, what'll I do then? So I try to keep my spirit sweet. I try to um, not burn bridges with people or animals. So 
the owner of this dog, you know, sometimes will be out in the yard and uh, knows the dog barks and tries to kind of, you know, curb his enthusiasm. But one day said, you know, if you ever want to walk down there, you know, it's really nice. You can go and kind of loop around and, and this and that. And it's kind of creepy in the sense that it goes far and it's like, I don't want to end up down there and no one knows where I am. And I told my husband and I said, I said, you know, well, well, the guy said that I can walk as far as I want and go into the woods and, and go around. And, you know, I said, you know, I was trying to convince myself it was safe. And my husband's response was, yeah, said every serial killer everywhere. <laughs> go on down there, you know. So I don't go far, but I go you know, as far as I can be seen. Um, but I have discovered that there are more butterflies, almost to the point where it's like a butterfly garden. There are a ton of yellow flowers, or so I thought. A lot of them are flowers, but it's also these yellow butterflies can go and blend right in. And you can be standing there and all of a sudden, one or two will fly or a whole, I don't know what you'd call them, a swarm? I don't know what butterflies are, a cult. And they'll just go. So one day I was taking, pic not pictures, but a video for my daughter. And I, I thought, well, this is so cool just, just to see all these butterflies because they can kind of come around you or encircle you or cross your path or what have you. But just to watch them and just to see them so free and so light. And, and they're beautiful when you, when you look at them. What was interesting was about two minutes in, and I thought, oh, this has gone on long enough. I don't need to be, you know, videoing for a long time. In the background were five deer and I because they caught my eye and, and they're like jumping like gazelles you know one they're like jumping through this field of whatever farmland whatever was growing there and I waited so I can still see the butterflies and I panned to the right and all of a sudden you see them reappear on the other side of all these bushes and they leapt I mean it was beautiful 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 so my point is what images are you seeing that can bring a smile or lighten your heart or give you encouragement? Um, maybe you don't need that. Maybe you just need to be reminded of the beauty in the world. A wonderful day, the sun is shining or the moon is you know, especially bright at night or a breeze comes through. Whatever can bring you peace, contentment, or to just take you out of all the drab and the bad news and the discouragement and the, you know, problems. What can you find in your world that will help you balance and tip the scales into um, a better direction? And just in closing, I want to say that I've had a couple things, and I'm not trying to be facetious, but, you know, someone, when, when I kind of, you know, explained, you know, one day I happened to mention, you know, that my father, you know, had been in declining health and then I led into it and said, he passed. oh, you lost your dad? And just the way she said it, and I've heard that phrase before. I've heard it, you know, so many times, like we all have, we, we have different ways to express the word death. But when she said, you lost your dad, instead of looking at it like, oh my gosh, I did. All I could think of was, I didn't lose him. I know exactly where he is. You know, he's not lost. I know where he lives today. But just to get back to the butterflies, I find myself smiling involuntarily because that reminder of what that symbolizes that, you know, my loved one is at peace. He is at rest. He is in a good place. Is like, I don't know that I needed that reassurance or that reminder, but I will take it. And that's all I'm trying to say is whatever that represents for you and to, to seek that peace. The peace that passes understanding, as it talks about in the Bible, is a wonderful thing. It's not about our circumstances. It's not about everything going our way. It's not about, oh, if everything happens like this, then I'll be happy. No. Don't wait for the stars to align. Don't wait for everything to be in your favor. Don't wait for the land, you know, what is it, the windfall, the lottery, whatever. No, no. Find that inner contentment and peace, something to smile about and bring you joy. That's where the true beauty is and um, to give you greater quality of life because we can't wait for it all to improve and go our way. I hope this brings you something to think about and something to give you a good feeling, a hope, a, a knowledge that um, 
yeah, we're going to get through. We will get through and we will be better for it if we choose to see the gifts and pay attention to them when they line our paths. God bless you. Please take care of yourself today and always stay well. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.